Hello and welcome back to the Quiet Part Podcast. My name is Chris. How's everyone doing today? I've got a couple more videos to go through here today, so let's uh, get right into it. But before I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and if you're feeling generous, that like button, and maybe even leave a comment. Uh, but for now, let's get right into it. This in from TimCast.com. A uh, Virginia teacher shot by a first grader can move forward with $40 million lawsuit. Newport News Circuit Court judge uh, ruled the teacher's injuries did not arise out of her employment and therefore weren't covered by workman's comp. Well, that's nice of them. Uh, the elementary school teacher who was shot in her classroom by a student can proceed with the lawsuit against the school district. Abby Zwerner sustained a hand and shoulder injury in January, after her six-year-old student brought a handgun to Rich Neck Elementary School and shot her, she spent two weeks in the hospital recovering. First off, I remember the story, and at the time I thought it was kind of crazy. A six-year-old had a handgun to bring to school. Uh, gun safety, everybody. Learn it. Understand it. Secure your firearms. And teach your kids these things. But... Also, make sure that they're not taking a handgun to school. Uh, the Newport New Circuit Court Judge Matthew Hoffman ruled in Zwerner's favor on uh, November 3rd, despite objections from Newport, Newport News Public Schools. Uh, the school district had argued that the lawsuit should be thrown out as Zwerner can receive almost 10 years of pay and lifetime medical care for her injuries under workers' compensation. The judge ruled that the teacher's injuries did not fall within the executive provisions or within the exclusive provisions of workers' compensation and coverage because they did not arise out of her employment. You know, it, it's odd to me because, first and foremost, school districts pay settlements all the time for frivolous reasons. Now, I don't know how big this school district is or how they're funded, but, I mean, I I would think that they would try to settle out on this and actually try to, one, make sure coverage actually happened, and two, still, you know, say, hey, this was not something that we had envisioned happening, and we're going to take care of that. But it's come to this. The danger of being shot by a student is not one that is peculiar or unique to the job of a first grade teacher, wrote Hoffman per WFMZ. Uh, according to the unsealed search warrants, the young boy involved in the shooting confessed to attacking Zwerner minutes after the shooting. Amy Kovac, a reading specialist at the school who rushed into the classroom after hearing gunfire, told police a student was standing by his desk with a gun on the ground. I shot that... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say it. I know the word. Uh, I shot that bitch dead, the boy told Kovac, according to her statement. I did it, he added, as she restrained him. I got my mom's gun last night. Well, that's, that's an, another problem right there. Why would a six-year-old be saying, I shot that bitch dead? Where does he learn that? Where does any child learn that particular language and know the context of why he should be using it in that way? That's it's yet another problem with parenting, uh, and we need to fix that. Uh, as Werner told investigators that when she separated her class into two groups for a reading activity, the boy took out the gun. She said she asked the student, what are you doing with that? And the boy fired. In her lawsuit, Werner accused school administration of gross negligence, she said the student had a history of behavioral issues that were known to the school's leadership who ignored repeated warnings from teachers. She also said the school failed to implement more stringent safety measures. He's six. That's what, first grade at best? How many, how much history does he have to have for behavioral issues? I mean, seriously, we're at January of the school year. He's got four months to accumulate those. I think something could have and should have been done by that point, uh, or at least been closely monitored. Um, 
It was the responsibility of the defendants to supervise the boy, control him, remove him when necessary for the safety of others, and search him for the firearm that they knew to be in his possession, says the complaint on April 3rd. This should have never happened. It was preventable, and thank God Abby is alive. But had the school administrators acted in the interest of their teachers and their students, Abby would not have sustained a gunshot wound to the chest. Uh, Diane Toscano, one of the attorneys representing Zwerner, uh, said at the press conference in January, the student's mother, Deja Taylor, pleaded guilty to one count of felony child neglect on August 15th. She had told investigators the 9 millimeter handgun her son used in the shooting had been stored in her purse with a trigger lock. A trigger lock was never discovered during the search of her home. Taylor pleaded guilty to illegally using drugs while owning a firearm and making false statements about using marijuana when she purchased a gun in June. You know, this story just gets worse and worse. Um, and I don't remember seeing all these things. Obviously, I didn't see the August 15th guilty plea there. But she should have probably pled guilty to that and more uh, than just one one count of neglect and lying on a form. I mean, may maybe she's actually President Biden's uh, long-lost daughter and he doesn't know about it because he's already forgot. Uh, because that seems to be a pattern of behavior that could be linked to that. But seriously, owning a firearm is a responsibility. I understand it's everybody, every American's right to own a firearm, keep and bear arms, Second Amendment. But that right does come with a responsibility. It does come with the responsibility of gun, responsible gun ownership. You do need to keep that in a safe and secured location. You do need to have that trigger lock. You do need to make sure that if you have children around those items, that they know, understand, and respect the safety and responsibility that comes with having these things around. Um that is a failing on her part. It's a failing on society's part for letting that be something that was lost to time, apparently, because these were things I learned when I was young. And I lived in a household where uh, we didn't have firearms anymore. Uh, they were they were gotten rid of before uh, I came along because, you know, my parents didn't want them around ki their kids. Um, and... You know, had I grown up, given what I already knew and what I was taught about such things, I did know and understand that these were some, these were not toys. They were not something to be used for this purpose. I was taught to respect them and understand what they were used for and why the, they were necessary at any point. This, this is a tragedy that did not need to happen. I am thankful she still has her life. I am thankful that she is doing something to compensate her for what she had to endure. No one should have to do that, and I honestly mean that. Uh, all right. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next segment. Well, that was interesting to say the least. Thank you for tuning in. And if you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future content as it's released. Also, be sure to hit that like button and, of course, leave a comment. It helps me to know what you thought. And again, thank you very much.